Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course. I'm James Messer. In this module, we're going to learn about migrating user profiles with the user state migration tool. We've already in our previous video talked about migrating user files. We were using the Windows built-in user migration, but the user state migration tool is another way to perform the same thing. We'll talk about why we have two different ways to do that in this module. So in this requirements, we're going to be installing, upgrading, and migrating to Windows 7, focusing on migrating from one machine to another, and migrating from previous versions of Windows. The user state migration tool is a tool that comes with the Windows automated installation kit. So in our previous videos, we've talked a little bit about the Windows AIK. If you have installed the Windows AIK, then you have all of the tools that you'll need, including the user state migration tool. Now the reason we have the user state migration tool is because we need a way to do this for very large environments. Our previous video, we were talking about using Windows Easy Transfer which is a really nice utility, but it requires that you sit down at a computer at the Windows graphical front end and be able to migrate files and information out of one operating system and migrate the files back into this operating system all from that Windows user interface. That means you'd have to visit every single computer to do this. The Windows user state migration tool does the same type of migration, but it's really designed for very large enterprises. It all happens at the command line. You can have this automated. It can be in batch files. It, there can be login prompts that can change the way that the user state migration tool works. It's very, very flexible. And when you're working with a large number of computers, you really need a way to do these things at the command line. That's exactly what the user state migration tool does for us. So we can migrate from Windows XP and Windows Vista to Windows 7. We can also migrate from Windows 7 to Windows Vista. So a couple of different ways where you can start in one operating system and go to the other. Notice you cannot migrate from Windows 7 back to Windows XP. That's a one-way trip whenever you make that type of migration. Using the user state migration tool is a two-step process, very similar to what we were doing with the Windows Easy Transfer. We have one process where we save everything and get it ready for migration. We have a second process where we take what we've saved and actually migrate it to the new machine. And because this is at the command line, again, it can be completely automated. What we're going to run is a program called Scan State. What this does is compile all of your user information. It was that first thing that we did on the old computer where we gathered all of our personal data, all of our bookmarks, all of our personal files, and we store them together. You have to run this at an elevated prompt if you're in Windows Vista or Windows 7, or you must be a local administrator if you're going to run this in Windows XP. When you move this to the new computer, you'll run a program called Load State. And that takes all of that information that you've loaded out of that user profile on the old computer, and it loads it into the new computer, again, all from the command line. When we were using Windows Easy Transfer, you may recall that there were a lot of configuration options you could choose. You could choose what types of files you wanted to transfer, what specific settings you wanted to transfer, the documents themselves that you wanted to transfer. And at the command line, you don't have all of those checkboxes, but you do have configuration files that you can set. One of those configuration files is called migapp.xml. This is to migrate the application settings. So your wallpaper settings, your font settings, some of the colors that you're using on the screen, options you have for all your folders, the ability to manage exactly what you want to move over is stored in the migapp.xml. Another configuration file is miguser.xml. As the name implies, this is your user information. Your user files and the types of files you'd like to transfer are stored in the miguser.xml configuration file. Migdocs.xml is where your user documents are stored. You may not keep everything in a My Documents folder. They may be in other places. So you might want to update the migdocs.xml with exactly the location where we're going to pull this information from. And if there are things that you would like to exclude during this migration process, there's a configuration file for that as well. The config.xml allows you to specify things that perhaps you don't want to bring over during the migration process. You also have options on how you would like to store this data that you're migrating. When you're in a large environment with a lot of people, you don't have the same types of control that you have when you're doing something like a Windows Easy Transfer. So one of the options you have is to store this data as an uncompressed file. 
What's nice about this is that you can simply use Windows Explorer to look at all of the data that you've stored. It's all stored in separate folders. So it's very easy to go into after the fact to see what you have migrated and perhaps what will be migrated to your new system. You can also store this as a compressed file. This means that it's going to take up a lot less room on your disk, but you can't go into Windows Explorer to view what's in there. The file's compressed, and therefore there are not individual files and folders to look at. You can also use something called a hard link. This creates some links to the user data, just pointers off to the user data. And when you do a wipe and load, the links still get followed. So it's a nifty little utility to be able to do that. But it does not also duplicate files on this system. So if you have a lot of files that are exactly the same in your migration, it can save you a little bit of time. You're not copying all those files, those duplicates of files, off to a separate store. It simply has one pointer that points then to all of those separate files. Very nifty. At a very minimum, you're probably going to need 250 megabytes to transfer a single migration of a user's profile information. So you want to be sure you have a lot of disk space available, preferably something on a big store, a network setting, somewhere out where you've got a big flash drive. And you want to be sure that you're not going to be left with not enough room to copy this over. So make sure you've got at least 250 megabytes or more available on your storage device. The user state migration tool is one, as I mentioned, that comes with the Windows AIK. So I've taken all of the files and folders on the AIK, and I've copied them off to my store, my network share that's out here on the Z drive for the user state migration tool. There are a lot of files and DLLs and, and, and any files and INF files and XML files that come with this. And in fact, if you wanted to look at, for instance, um, your migdocs.xml. There is a migdocs in here where you can install and put in exactly what types of documents you would like to transfer over. So these are XML files. If you're going to change the configurations here, you need to be familiar with the format and how these work. There are a number of third-party, non-Microsoft graphical front ends to some of these XML files. But that's something you'll have to try on your own. Microsoft expects you to be able to edit these yourself. For the purposes of the certification, it's probably best if you know what these XML XML files do. You don't have to know a lot about the detailed customization of these. Let's run a scan state so we can move the, the information that's on our Windows XP system off to this Z drive. We'll, score, we'll store the information out there. And I'll go down to my C drive and run it from there. I'm going to run scan state. And I'm going to specify where I'm going to store this information. Let's store it in the root of our Z drive. And I'm going to call this my uh, migration data. And let's say that I had configured some files out of my Z drive with customized migration app XML. And let's say that I had also configured one for my migdocs.xml. So by special specifying the slash i and then the location of that, you can also specify, yes, I'm going to use those XML files that I customized. And lastly, I'm going to use a slash O, which means if a scan state file of MIG data already exists out there, overwrite the file. I don't happen to have one there, but if you're doing this a lot and using the same named file, you'll find that it keeps adding to the existing migrated file. I want to be sure that doesn't happen. So I'm going to say create a new file every time. As scan state begins the migration process, it's going to take a little bit of time to compile all of this data together and pull in the information. If you have a lot of information in your user uh, configuration, then it might take a lot of time. My particular user profile, pretty small. So you can see it only takes a little bit of time. Started the migration process, processed the store, found all the migration units for Professor Messer, found everything on this machine, gathered the data, and then it was done. And the scan state return code of 0 means that everything worked properly. You can configure this in a batch file to say, if this comes back with something other than 0, I need to do something else on this machine or create a report of some kind. So out on the root of Z drive now, there's my MIG data directory. And inside that directory, if I type it properly, MIG data, there we go, you can see there is a USMT folder. And in there is a migration file that contains everything from my profile. Now we need to go to our Windows 7 machine and load this information up with our load state command. 
We're now in our Windows 7 machine. And what we're going to run now is our load state command to load everything from the profiles that we've saved. I can choose here to also, let's do a, a net use. And I want to see I have out here a Y drive that goes out to that backups folder where I also have the load state program. Remember to run this that you must be at an elevated prompt. So I've started my CMD here. And you can confirm that by seeing the word administrator right there on your disk. So we'll choose Y colon. And I'm going to run load state. And I'm going to specify that the file that I would like to load is also out on Y. And it's called mig-data. That's the directory we stored it in. If you also wanted to create separate XML files for your app and your user and the data that you want to transfer in, you can absolutely do that. You don't have to transfer in everything that you saved out there. So the same XML files you were using during scan state, you can also customize those to be able to be used during the load state. I'm going to choose everything. We'll just use the defaults here. So I'll just hit Enter. And it says that our log messages will be sent to the log. It's starting the migration process. This is very similar to the messages we got when we were saving this information out to the store. It found the information. It's pulling it into this new uh, machine called Control Room. It's pulling in the information for Professor. And now it's going to finish up doing the migration of each one of those sections. When it finishes this, we'll again get a prompt at the bottom that says whether it was successful or not. And if this is something that you're automating with batch files, you'll know as part of the batch file whether it was completed or not. And then you can have it either move to another section of the batch file or have it perhaps try again or send an error message. Let's see what we can remember about our user state migration tool. Our first question is, where do you find the user state migration tool? Where can you grab these files and be able to use them? Well, of course, they're installed automatically along with the Windows Automated Installation Kit. So if you installed the Windows AIK, then you have also installed the user state migration tool. Our next question is, how do you define the configuration settings for the USMT? If you recall on the Windows Easy Transfer, we clicked some boxes. Well, the command line, we don't have that option. So we choose XML files there to manage our app, our user, and the data files that we're going to transfer. And the last question is, which migration store allows you to view the migrated data with Windows Explorer? There's one type where we could use Explorer to go into the folder to see what was going on. And of course, that was the uncompressed file type. This concludes our requirements for the configuring Windows 7 and being able to do these migrations using the Windows migration tools. We've been able to migrate from one machine to another and to migrate from previous versions of Windows. If you'd like to see any of our absolutely free Microsoft if you'd like to see any of our absolutely free Microsoft certification videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or send me a message, you can visit our website at ProfessorMesser.com.